what do you do? You go buy everybody. You buy every influencer, you buy every politician, you buy every celebrity, you buy the stadium, you buy all of Albany. Hello everyone, today our guest is Michael Saylor. Michael J. Saylor is an American entrepreneur and business executive. He is the executive chairman and a co-founder of MicroStrategy, a company that provides business intelligence, mobile software, and cloud-based services. Saylor served as MicroStrategy's chief executive officer from 1989 to 2022. In this video, Michael Saylor slams Sam Bankman Fried and Crypto Pump and Dump schemes and reinforces his faith on Bitcoin as the best asset to invest in. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. Michael Saylor, the MicroStrategy Executive Chairman and Major Bitcoin. Bull shared his perspective on the fall of the FTX empire in a recent interview. Saylor said that for years there has been a low-grade boiling guerrilla war between the BTC community and the larger crypto community over industry practices that he repeatedly called shitcoinery. In Saylor's perspective, FTX founder Sam Bankman Fried was the poster child of the latter. There is something ethically broken about being able to issue your own unregistered security. Sam and most of the people in the crypto world were always guilty of the sin of shitcoinery. Uh, why'd Sam blow up? Well, Sam went to D.C. and in addition to trying to get, you know, fairly exceptional treatment just for his exchange, he then started bad-mouthing Binance and, and uh, implying that uh, the other offshore exchanges were much shadier than his. And uh, that pissed them off, and that pissed off CZ. And so CZ said, okay, well, f and that combined with, combined with the leak of the balance sheet. When the Alameda balance sheet leaked, and it was clear that something like 10, $12 billion of $14 billion in assets were air tokens backed by nothing, it became pretty clear that they were rickety, Imagine if I said I have $12 billion of air token, it trades $10 million a day. Okay, well, all you got to do is dump $100 million on the market. It's going to zero. So once they saw that, I think CZ has is CZ the heavyweight? Is CZ the heavyweight of heavyweights, or would you put... Uh, the, yeah. He, look, look, offshore... That's the CEO of Binance? Yes. O okay. Offshore, right? Offshore, the most influential... Uh, person in the industry is CZ, but worldwide, I think the most influential person in the industry is the chair of the SEC. And, and the entire, yeah, Gary Gensler, and the entire industry pretty much is waiting to see what, what the, Gensler will do. And Gensler is, is pretty much the one person who could provide a playbook uh, or a set of rules of the road that would cause this industry to move forward in an economically responsible, ethical fashion, right? Just like Ethereum is an unregistered security. It's controlled by a few people in the Ethereum Foundation and Consensus. Fair. Then here's just a like question. FTT, just like Solana. Perfect. But here's a follow-up on that, Michael. They're all unregistered security. Here's a follow-up on that. Right. I, I don't own a single Ripple, just so we know. So yeah. full disclaimer, I'm not a Ripple guy. But if, if both of them are unregistered, why target Ripple and not target Ethereum the way he is targeting Ripple? And by the way, this is coming from a guy that owns uh, Ethereum, not Ripple. Yeah, I think, I think the best thing for the world would be with the, if the SEC pretty much shut down all of it. It's all unethical, right? I mean, the, the Bitcoin position would be Bitcoin is an ethical commodity, all of these other altcoins are unregistered securities. They're all just equity tokens issued by a company in order to get around going public, and they're committing securities fraud. Ethereum of included. Of course, especially Ethereum. You know, Ethereum's got $20 billion of ETH token locked up in the staking contract right now, and there's a couple of people that may or may not give it back to you ever. Now, that, isn't that the definition of investment contract? If, if a bank took $20 billion of your assets, froze the, the window and said, you can't have your money back ever, maybe in the year 2024. We're not sure. We're just going to keep it. We may actually give you interest on it. We may take it all. We may, you know, we may slash it. 
that's the definition of a security, right? It's an investment of money in a common enterprise, you know, relying upon the efforts of others and expectation of profit. The whole, the whole point is if you want a crypto asset to be a commodity, you can't rely upon four engineers, a company, a CEO. If a, if a person can make a decision, it's not a commodity anymore. The fact is Ripple's got a company. Ethereum's got a company. Ethereum Foundation has engineers. You are literally waiting on the engineers that work for the Ethereum Foundation to write the code to give you your money back. And then you're also waiting to find out what the monetary policy will be. They change it half a dozen times in the last six years. So I, I, I think that that's pretty evident with all these crypto tokens. What you have is you have the complete sham Ponzi schemes, you know, like the collapse in a hurry, like Terra Luna. Then you have crypto tokens that are unregistered securities that are perhaps somewhat pseudo-competently managed that don't collapse, but they're still unregistered securities, which makes them unethical to promote. And then you have cryptocurrencies like Tether and Circle. They attempt to have backing, right? Circle purports to have 100% backing uh, for their coin. We know that to like 83% of Tether deposits are backed by U.S. Treasuries, if you're to believe their attestations. But again, those, those are not publicly traded companies. So I think the one thing that's missing in the crypto industry is, by and large, nearly everybody in the crypto market has never taken a company public. They don't understand securities law. They're like, if you're going to be kind, you're going to say they're well-meaning technologists that are enthusiastically pursuing new ideas. But generally, they're pursuing no new ideas in an irresponsible, ir inappropriate, unethical fashion. Is that based on greed? What is that based on? The same reason Sam did it. It was like one part greed, one part enthusiasm, go fast and break things, one part lack of adult supervision. Look, the stuff, the stuff in the domain a year ago was Sam makes $10 million a week at Alameda. Alameda is a money machine that, that generates $10 million a week or $500 million a year, and that's his cash cow. And, and the exchange is just the exchange. And, and then people couldn't quite figure out the rest except for the fact that obvious, you know, all these tokens are air tokens that are being manipulated offshore, right? So, so the, the belief was they were good traders and they were manipulating air tokens and running an unregulated exchange. The truth, of course, that comes out now is they weren't good traders. They were goofballs. And really the... The machine that made this all work, the brilliance of it is to generate $10 billion worth of fake collateral and then borrow $10 billion. It's crazy to me. Well, I mean, three things. I generate $10 billion in fake collateral. I take $10 billion of money out of my bank from my real customers. I show fake fraudulent accounting statements to investors and get them to give me billions more. And then I pledge the token collateral to other crypto hedge funds and get them to give me billions of loans. So, so you could say that last part, that was, you know, was I, I took advantage of some other crypto bros that were also a bit, you know, mm -hmm. a, a bit, uh, what is it, uh, risk addicted, like, uh, you know, too aggressive. And I took advantage of venture capitalists that threw caution to the wind that weren't paying attention. But, and, and the first part is, you know, I attracted all those billions by just telling people I'll give them extreme leverage and let them trade these tokens and make it cheap. And then, I, I, again, there are these di diabolical twists where Sam would uh, – he would like buy BlockFi and then, and then pressure them to put their assets on his exchange. And so a lot of – or he bought a lot of things and when he bought the things, he would pressure the people – to put their assets in tra on his exchange or trade with him. So I'm issuing equity, like the equity in FTX, you know, was worth, I mean, Sam would say, oh, it's a $32 billion valuation. You remember reading that in Forbes and Fortune? Okay, I've got a $32 billion company. I'm going to give you a billion dollars worth of FTX equity. And then I've got my shadow equity, eight, $10 billion worth of FTT 
At one point, FTT was worth $15 billion. So, so they generated these two equity tokens, the people that are based on what? Uh, opaque financials that are fraudulent, right? If I, if I have fraudulent financials and I, I crank up the two equity tokens, then I can use them to do acquisitions. You're rolling the entire thing forward. So I, it was, I guess my point here is, if you're doing that and you're extracting $5 billion of real cash and then you're buying, he put a billion into a Bitcoin miner. He put a billion into marketing. He bought a billion worth of other stuff. If you're actually extracting real cash, you're burning the candle at both ends. And so it was destined to blow up because they were just too aggressive. First of all, he bought everybody. And how did, okay, and, and let me just make a stark observation. He counterfeited $10 billion in one year. If you could counterfeit, if you, know, if <laughs> yeah. you created 10, it's, look, you have a 300 million to FTT tokens, move the price 30 bucks, do the math, right? It, $30 on a token when you give yourself 300 million of them is 10 billion. And that's just one token. So if you fall off the turnip truck and you find that you can generate $10 billion in a year, what do you do? You go buy everybody. You buy every influencer. You buy every politician. You buy every celebrity. You buy the stadium. You buy all of Albany. You buy the government. You buy the everything that's for sale, right? There, it's hard to find a crypto influencer that didn't take FTX money. But he hired everybody. Go as fast as you can. Well, how much can you spend? A billion in a year? Two billion a year? They thought they had found the fountain of money, right? There is nothing more lucrative than a license to print money. This is why the Bitcoin maximalists just get so angry, right? They declare war on the shitcoiners and shitcoinery. The idea that you can just create your own token, sell it to the general public and manipulate the price of it and dump it on... But, but here's where the... The poor Bitcoiners never figured out. Their view is they're creating a shit coin and dumping it on retail. But again, Sam's twist on it was, no, I'm not going to dump it on retail. I'm driving it to the sky. I'm never going to sell it. I'm going to use it to buy other banks. And then I'm going to drain the assets out of the bank by giving myself an under the table loan. It's so much more diabolical than just dumping a, a shit coin on unsuspecting retail traders. Saylor said that the diabolical twist in the FTX story was that SBH generated billions of dollars out of tokens he printed out of thin air, as well as issuing himself billions in loans from customer funds. While many have debunked the story of SBF and his mismanagement of funds, the community on Reddit applauded Saylor for his clear explanation of the situation and a straightforward comparison with BTC. If you enjoyed his highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.